Yeah, so on, on the uh, chores, um, we, we still have to uh, do the, the line breaking. So the, the current um, formal specifications are too wide. And uh, for the, the um, part that, that is uh, in, in JSON schema org, um, I would probably just use the, the um, standard line breaking mechanism that we now have for uh, RFCs. I forget the, the RFC number of that mechanism, but th th that's easy to do. Um, but uh, for the CDDL specification, uh, I probably have to sit down and uh, change this. Uh, uh, um, it, it's pretty accessible the way it is now, so it, it's hard to get worse, but to stay with these 70 uh, columns. Uh, uh, we also had the uh, desire to add more automated checks now that we get to the end of, of this round. Maybe that's not a high priority, um, but I think we already have a pretty good set of checks. We just have to make sure that we occasionally uh, run these checks. They are not automated in the uh, commit. So um, I, I would say we don't have to do that uh, right now. Next slides. Um, we were looking for examples for SDF pointers to input and output uh, parameters. Um, so if uh, we, we find an example from, from the playground, we can uh, paste in here. By the way, there are still a few um, models in the playground, I think about five, uh, that are using the old the SDF 1.0 syntax uh, uh, so at some point, uh, somebody will have to uh, update those. I think these are Michael's, um, but I'm not entirely sure. Just look into the CI uh, report. And um, there was one proposal by, by Jan um, to uh, fix the, the CDDL to be more expresses, expressive of the co-occurrence uh, constraints. So there, there are a number of JSON schema org inspired um, qualities that only apply if a specific type uh, has been um, chosen. Um, so uh, we couldn't do this for a while because the, the tool that I use to generate JSON schema org from the CDL uh, doesn't fully support that. But uh, um, we uh, probably can do this uh, soon, and as soon as the tool does that, I'm just going to make that uh, change and ask people to check the, the generated um, JSON schema org again. Next slide. Uh, Carson, a, a question here on the yeah. JSON schema org. I guess w when we do all, all the updates, now it would be great to have the test case for the JSON schema, which reminded me of the Cadillac model. Yes. Um, any, any, any updates where, where we are with that? Well, it's on my to-do list. It's not an issue right now. Maybe we should add it as an issue. It, it's not really an issue on the document, but uh, it, it's uh, uh, something that, that should be done to make sure that uh, we can check the, the JSON schema org. Um, model mm. okay. so can, can you just add an issue uh, i'll add an issue thanks thank you slide five please so this is really the the uh, big item that we should be discussing uh today um i think we, we already have had some discussion uh last time but uh, this this wasn't quite actionable uh, yet. Um, so th there were two um, changes that, or maybe three changes, depending on how you count it, um, that we wanted to uh, make. Uh, first of all, uh, both the, the given names and the quality names um, should say that you cannot uh, use uh, colons in those because we will be using the colons for something else. 
And uh, well, that this is that is pretty much uh, just uh, um, obvious text uh, that needs to be generated. So that that should be easy to do. Uh, the harder part is uh, doing issue twenty eight, which is contributing to more than the default uh, uh, namespace. Uh, so we we have a third item which is not on this list is uh, also having namespacing for quality names, uh, which is prepared by the resolution of number 67, but we we don't say how you actually do that yet. So we would have to add a third issue to actually um, explain how quality names uh, can be namespaced. And number 28 would be about um, namespacing the, the named items, the SDF data and SDF objects and uh, properties um, uh, and so on. So basically what we, we seem to have arrived here on is that um, if a given name is uh, contains a colon, uh, we interpret it as a curry in the um, context of, of the namespace uh, declarations. And uh, we essentially uh, modify the the document in such a way that the the JSON pointers um, that uh, can be used in that um, uh, document point into these alternative uh, namespaces. So we have a, a resolution mechanism uh, that we would use for for doing the translation. And the translation would lead to um, JSON pointers that uh, replace all the, the slashes in the um, given name in the, the um, URI part of the query of the given name uh, with uh, some escape code. I think it was tilde one, uh, but I may be mistaken. Uh, so th this is not going to be beautiful, but then we are never looking at these. We are normally looking at the curry uh, version of that, which which uh, should maintain uh, manageable. So that that's the plan, and somebody has to write that up. Thanks, Karsten, and I I posted a link on the chat. Uh an earlier document where we drafted you know, some of these examples, how could they look like? How could the JSON pointers look like for those who haven't perhaps followed the discussion earlier? And also a reminder for everyone else. Are we having the discussion now or are we we're still going? Okay. I think I think we, we should have that now. Um, so I think the, the um... Um, example here, uh, thank you for, for digging that out, Ari. The example here is quite uh, illustrative, so I think we should uh, look at that and see if we are happy with that. Now, the thing that I encountered that does not show up in this example is um, when we use curies in SDF ref targets, they don't show up in the internal JSON pointers in the in the SDF document. But when we have curies and um, at least qualities, and I haven't really looked at you know a lot at the other one about defining. We, we 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 have to make a really 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 hard cut between namespacing qualities and namespacing named items. Yeah, I, I agree. So so I only want to talk about the namespacing quality. Um, they the, the namespace qualities show up in other internal JSON pointers, SDF pointers. Like if I if I use a, a namespace or sorry, it's, I use it as yeah qualities. If, if I create a new quality and namespace it, then then I have, I have to be able to use that name of that quality in another JSON pointer in the same document or in another document. And so it it seems like when you encode a thing into a query, it becomes a string. You don't want to expand it when you're using it in an internal pointer, but I, I did encounter that question. This example doesn't show reusing one of those definitions in another JSON pointer, which which happens all the time in STF. So we should we should you know I don't know if there's really an issue. I just considered the curie 
prefixed um, quality name as a string and did not try to expand it when I reused it in the same document. And that made sense to me to do that because the expansion only needs to happen um, when you use it in, a, in an SDF ref or when you need to resolve it at the next uh, level in processing. Does, does that make sense? Do you follow what I'm, what I'm saying? Yeah, so the, 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 we, we need to have a um, very strict firewall between things that, that look like JSON pointers but contain curries and things that look like JSON pointers but contain these escaped. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, I'm not sure that we fully understand yet um, where that, that wall actually can be put up. So what what is the the processing um, model for actually performing this resolution? Yeah, I didn't have to really think about this until I tried to use this in a set of models that, you know, depended on each other and in a larger context. And now I have like a lot of models that do this and depend on each other. So, um, and and the processing, I'm in the middle of figuring that out, but I may have some um, some experience with that soon. Yeah, Michael. So I, I started to graph an example about using S uh, using STF ref to these qualities, but you don't you don't ever STF ref a quality only STF ref no. a definition. You STF ref uh, essentially a given name in its context. Yeah. So as as long as we don't do the contribute to more than one default namespace, we don't have the issue. Is that correct? I'm not sure I agree, but um, let's let's work this okay. offline because I think we're. We're, we're looking at maybe a little bit different use case or a little, maybe there are other examples that that may not be valid examples, um, but it does mm. come up in what I'm doing. So maybe what I'm doing is wrong in some way, but, um, but we should take that offline or maybe we should save that for a time when we're, we're actually revealing some, some of these examples. So, I mean, if, if you see what I'm typing in the, uh, in the code, well, in the hedge doc, uh, that I, that I shared, I'm now doing an imaginary, I mean, SDF ref to the quality, I mean, you, which you wouldn't do yet, but let's say in some context, you would someday have to do it. Um, trying to see how it, how I think it would look like. Do you, do you see now the uh, STF ref in the last line of the example yeah. of STF refing namespace mm -hmm. quality? Yeah, except that we don't STF ref quality. So. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so. So. And I guess, Michael, this is exactly what, what you don't want to do, because what, what you would rather do, I, I'll make another example. Um, yeah, so you would have the carried you, version of yeah, the... Do something like this. Yeah, yeah. And that's all I was saying. It's exactly what I was saying. And then I don't know if my context really lines up with what you're doing, but it, yeah, that's all I was saying is you... The second one would be exactly the way that it would look if you were to make an SDF reference to that part of the document, which again, I, 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 like you're saying that um, you're, you can theoretically do that, but there isn't any way of using that that we've defined. And I think that that's what I need to look at, but uh, I agree the second. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and I guess yeah, the, the, the problem, uh, sorry. Okay. Go ahead. 
I, I, I guess that the, the problem here was, I mean, well, actually within this context, it would work because you're still using query also in, in, in the beginning. Um, but the problem was that in the end, you will need to make these JSON pointers independent of the namespace definition block because the namespace. Well, yeah, and that's block. when you expand it. Um, yeah. And so I think that's what Carson was saying is there's a, a line or a firewall or whatever and sort of mm. is, is there an easy way to define the context to which you don't need to expand these and where, where you do expand them and is there a clear sort of um, delineation of those two contexts, that, you know, mm. and I think there there is, but um, I, I can't really quite articulate it right now. <laughs> When you need to know, um, there's a thing in the validation. It probably has to do with like trying to do validation when you need to um, understand whether a thing conforms to that. So uh, let, let me let me prepare more. I don't think it's a showstopper for where we are in this, and I don't really want to derail the discussion again with a bunch of, you know, what what might just be um, there might be other ways to do it or whatever. So let me. Um, let me take it offline. But Michael, do you think this your concern here um, that needs to be resolved before RFC, right? No, that's what I'm saying. I don't think it does. So I don't okay. want to derail the discussion. I wanted to just point out that I had encountered that in my recent work and and kind of wondered about it. And I also concluded that the second way is, you know. Um, to not try to expand them, but, and uh, but but there may be other questions that we need to talk about. But I, yes, I I still think don't put colons into given names is probably uh, it doesn't change that at all. But but yeah, Michael, that would be actually great if you can. I uh, yeah, said offline make the make the examples you, you had in mind and um, and see if this rule of not having colons is enough. I guess all. I, I would yeah. yeah, I'll copy I'm, them out of my documents into this one, I guess, is probably would be a good way to do it, right? Cool. Yeah, because I guess like all, all the examples we have crafted so far seem to be, you know, okay with that rule, but of course it's the usual unknown unknowns that is the issue. Um, if there's a case we haven't encountered yet where that's not enough. But so far it looks good, that's enough for our RFC. So the, the problem I have with erecting this wall um, is, um, let's talk about SDFref for a moment, um, is that uh, you want to uh, be able to do an SDFref to an, uh, something that's inside uh, the current model, and then you want to use the current uh, names, uh, but you also want to be able to do an SDFref to something that's outside. Uh, the current model, and there you want to have the resolved names. Um, so, uh, how how does the resolution process know whether a pointer is an outside pointer that is already resolved or an inside pointer that is not yet resolved? And maybe we can come up with a rule for that. Um, but uh, I think uh, we we have to have a few examples uh, where we exercise this. Yeah, I'll I'll, um, I'll provide some of what what I'm doing, and we we can you know take it from there. I think that what you just the question you just asked may may it it, it may be kind of a red herring because when you look at it, you're actually making a pointer to a document, and I think we have to kind of figure out what what we say about that, uh, maybe not a, a red herring, but maybe there's just more to think about there than, than just inside outside. Um, Cause if you're pointing to another SDF document, it, it resolves to a, a location in that document, which contains security. So it didn't, it didn't actually cause a problem not expanding them to make cross document references, but I may you may be talking about some other kind of reference. So that's where I think that we need to, but if maybe, maybe there's a context where the rule isn't, you know, it isn't really, it doesn't have to be a really, um, 
um, you know, um, complex rule, I don't think, but let's, let's, that's what we need to look at. I agree. So, Michael, if I understood you correctly, you're saying that you could still use the query syntax even when pointing outside. Um, well, po so when pointing to another the, document, yeah. Yeah. And you would just be using the namespaces of that document within your pointer. Well, I, I guess you could say both documents are using the same namespace. So, ah. the query would resolve the same in either document. But maybe okay. that's the okay. rule. I don't know. Okay. I, I say I just started to do it, and I don't even maybe I don't even appreciate what the pattern that I've created yet. So <laughs> that's why you made me think when you said we don't do that, and I said, well, but I did that, and now I need to go. But I don't have time now. I don't really want to again yeah. interrupt this meeting a lot like last time. I think I was responsible for most of the, um, you know, spiraling off track. So I don't want to do that again. No, but that's actually an interesting idea. So I guess what 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 it would take you would in the document you are referring from so basically where you are writing your pointer you would add a namespace that is used by the other document and as long as the namespaces are the same and the query prefix doesn't even have to be the same but as long as the namespaces are the same when you turn everything into this long form with the tildes and everything they would actually be the same so. I, that could maybe be even made to, to work. But again, maybe, maybe we need a few examples of, of doing exactly that. Yeah, so the, the <clears throat> problem that uh, this, this whole qualified name thing from XML has is that uh, you cannot rely on two different uh, documents uh, having the same prefix uh, for for the same uh, UI, so you need to be able to cope with a situation where where, for instance, you are uh, referencing two documents and one is uh, calling the thing OMA and the other one is calling the thing IPSO, mm -hmm. and um, you you have to make sure that your uh, external reference is not uh, influenced by that. And I would even go beyond that and say that uh, the the meaning of a document should be invariant uh, with respect to the prefixes that actually are used inside that document. Yeah, I, I and I think that's that's doable. So, so it, it could well be mm -hmm. that in the let's call the document A the one where you have the pointer and document B where you're pointing into. And let's say in, in document A you call it, you know, OMA. But as long as it points to the same URL, yeah. uh, and and in the in document B you call it ipso, yes, the pointers would look in the query format different, even the point the same thing. But if once you resolve them, they would look identical. Yeah. Uh, so I guess as long as the, you have the namespace definition along with the pointer in the context you're using it, it might just work. So so that's what I was saying about a more deeper uh, deeper invariant in the rule. It's a more complex rule, but in this case, it's probably worthwhile because it gives more robustness to being able to mash things up. Again, I the, thanks. I that you're you're actually adding a lot to the understanding of kind of what's going on here. Um, <laughs> So I guess this is more confirmation though that kind of what we're doing is probably if is this again back to this rule, if we just say don't put colons into given names, then maybe this is something we can fully resolve <laughs> pun intended later. <laughs> yeah, we probably have to add something about SDF. Pointers and colons in them. Maybe that's just a corollary. Oh, that would be that would be good to at least kind of demonstrate that we have some understanding of the of the of the full uh, impact. Good. Yeah, so I, I'm now 
started to handcraft that thing that we think we're defining. I'm actually now using the definition, uh, but we're contributing to a weird namespace. I know, actually, now I'm not. I need to contribute it to bar. And I'll uh, trying to see how it actually looks like. Yeah, I think we've kind of like narrowed it down to a, a reproducer here that, that you can just make a crafted example. I'll still I'll still bring my examples in, but um, um, I can. So can can we? I mean, um, can we? What exactly do we need to put into the to the RFC or to the kind of the draft heading for working group class call? I mean, um, well, the extension mechanism is going to use uh, namespaces, and those namespaces are going to require the the query mechanism that we'll already use, and therefore we we don't want um, we want to make a rule that are no colons in the in the names, that means, I guess, if you have colons in your source material, you'll have to, like, escape them or convert them or something like that. Hmm. Right, and then additionally, um, something about in that explanation about the, the JSON pointer format, um, maybe it could be just casually brought into the, the explanation that, that the JSON pointer format could contain these also and maybe not be certainly not be prescriptive about anything, but just kind of explain that. Mm -hmm. The only thing to be prescriptive about is no colons in given names, I think. Yeah. Or qualities, quality names. Um, right, that's not the same as named in the scheme. That's right, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we okay. maybe need a better term for given name, but. Uh... Right. <laughs> it's actually the quality names that are the extension mechanism. So that's the maybe the the bigger deal actually, because the given names would be the the number twenty eight contributing to more than one namespace. I yes. Think. And as Carson said earlier, I think this clearly they're two different things, and don't need to be even really be in the same discussion. Except they both are alternate uh, additional expanded uses of. Curious in our, um, you know, back. So if we limit ourselves only to what needs to be in the RFC, Carson, are you fine with creating the necessary text for that? Or I think so. Michael, yes. Sir. Yes. You Perfect. you find out when you write the text. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> yeah, impossible definitely. to predict. That's the, the good thing about writing that you are forced to actually uh, clean up your thoughts. And uh, so I'm, I'm not predicting whether I will run into a problem there or not. Good. So maybe I, so I, I, I worked a bit on the example, the external refs example. Yeah. Do, do you see anything immediately horribly wrong there? Yeah. Just fixed it. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Uh, what 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 was that tilde? Um, that's the forward slash. Yeah, tilde till one is forward slash, and yeah, tilde okay. till, till two I think was tilde. But of course, I mean the interesting part is like what with the with the columns because now. Yeah, I said like you, you don't now HTTPS looks like a namespace, uh, query prefix. If we need to, to yes. take, take some considerations there. No, that was always the main problem with query prefixes, <coughs> why they're not widely used, basically. Yeah, so if you have a strong firewall between unresolved and resolved ones, then it, it's easy because then you can. Um, just say uh, the the colon in the resolved ones is the UI colon, the UI scheme colon. Oh, by the way, you have to do this on the BES as well. 
Ah, yeah, you mean the in the first pass. Yeah. Yeah. I think you need to. Yeah. Ah, and here we have now the issue with or without training slash. I'm opting for without. <laughs> Let's kill the training slashes. Because the um otherwise the hash looks funny. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so I guess th that example seems to point the direction that we could be fine with this rule. Yeah. It, 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 it even works with that thing. Yeah, and I, I think that really what I'm doing is using it in a refinement where I say uh, I later need to create an SDF definition where I refer to that, that uh, location in the document and set the constant value to an instance value, for example, if I'm building a model of an instance. Or maybe even if I have an object model that has to has some variations that have different IDs and I want to set the IDs of those variations. And so I need to kind of have that query in the reference where I do that. Again, there may be other ways of doing what I'm doing that are better patterns, so we could talk about that, but I think that this is pretty much close to what what I need to do as well. Your example. Cool. <clears throat> okay, and probably not that far in the future, we should also make a draft that has these things so we can a better place to refer to than the scratch pad we have here. Oh, right. So we decided that we were going to build drafts for individual features going forward, yeah. right? For stuff yeah. like this. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Um, I had put this absolutely. up on my to do list five minutes ago. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So you're, we're only five minutes behind you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I guess, well, conclusion, we do have future proof namespaces. Just don't put yeah, there. so uh, we, we don't really have a full existence proof that this, this firewalling um, works, but uh, right now it looks good on a napkin. And writing that draft actually is, is a prerequisite uh, for me to say we have nailed it by just disallowing the, the corners. Mm-hmm. And perhaps uh, write an implementation because I think what would be interesting is to go back and forth between the result and non result form. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's non trivial. But if, if it's doable, that would be great. I'm not sure it's really necessary to round trip those either, but um, yeah, I, I kind of agree in concept. It's, you could do that, but that's always been the second big problem with curies and why they're not widely used. Mm. Great. Shall we move on? I think so. So I s switch to the next slide. Yes, please. Yeah, and th then the the last thing we we still have as as an. Um, open technical um, issue um, is the, the thing versus object um, issue. And uh, th there are two um, issues, um, 56 and 62, that, that really just describe the problem, but don't really um, say how to solve it, and we have two pull requests that actually solve uh, the the problem. And my my original proposal was to just say um, we we uh, unify SDF object and SDF thing, 
so everything an uh, uh, SDF object can do and SDF thing can do and, and vice versa. Um, so this this is uh, um, a relatively simple thing to do. <clears throat> we could also delete SDF object, but I think Wouter would be unhappy about that. So let's uh, keep that in. Um, just as a synonym and, and not talk about deprecate or anything like that. So this is basically the idea be behind uh, number 66. Jan, I hope I'm, I'm not uh, talking nonsense here. No, that's uh, absolutely correct. <laughs> and the, the uh, alternative was to imbue the, the uh, uh, capabilities of the SDF object to the SDF thing, um, but not do the other direction. Um, so the F SDF thing can do everything that an SDF object can do, but an SDF object cannot contain things. And that's uh, pull request 71. And I think we, we essentially have to decide between do nothing, do pull request 71, and do pull request 66. Yeah, I think you got Wouters can what what the agreement with Wouter and the sort of thing we realized was that we already kind of when we make these changes that already you know if we make mandatory changes it already has substantial impact on a on a existing body of work. So what we wanted to do was prefer the thing that didn't disrupt one DM's ability to set to basically have the definitions still look like they did with objects. And so that that's you know that's that's clear. The other one about uh, my opinion on things, object containing things is objects don't need to contain things. We could still can uh, still have a little bit of hierarchy there and it and it would probably make more sense to some people. Um, but some are in, still involved in some who aren't. Um, but also, you know, wouldn't really limit our ability to to produce good content. So 71, I think would be my, I would say I'd be okay with that. Great. Any other opinions? Yeah, I, I think I, I think I agree with, with Michael that like this, I guess the 71 is the preferred one. So yes, um, having SDF thing, the capability to have its own properties, actions and events, but SDF object would not be able to have further objects or things. So SDF thing would be still be the composition method, but SDF object would be as it is. Well, I think uh, right objects now. could have objects, though. I think what you just said, sorry to interrupt, but I think that we might talk about that a little bit. Um, I, I think it's it's useful to have this atomic object. <laughs> sorry for overloading the so word. So one DM could still have a rule, though. What is it? Is it something that we should institute in SDF? Is really my question to you. Mm, yeah. I think it's because I mean we we if, if you need composition you can always use SDF thing. Yeah, but that would be the way you when you do compose composition you always do SDF thing. If you don't need to do composition, if you do only the you know the atomic parts, you would do SDF objects. To me, that's kind of a, a useful mental model on like having those two capabilities. But that would be broken if SDF object would be containing SDF object, because then you might as well use the SDF thing, especially now if they are you know, even closer to each other. But having them to be exactly the same, I think would actually increase confusion. So, so that's why the You're actually creating exactly. a third alternative where you say, if you need to nest these, you have to use thing. I, yeah, but I think that that's what 71 actually says. Jan, am I right? Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I think uh, I um, yeah, intended uh, with uh, 71 to allow nesting of uh, objects actually. So objects okay. could ah. contain objects, but yeah, I think the third option that we just proposed, yeah, would be a viable to alternative. So I, I think the decision that would have to be made here is if there should be something like a leaf node or leaf um, concept, or if yeah, this thing should should be allowed uh, in any cases. So we are calling the leaves SDF object and the the other uh, tree nodes uh, SDF things. Yeah. That would make sense to no, me. That, that that wasn't. Can the you right build something wording. with just with just SDF things then, so I don't need to use SDF objects. 
yeah, I didn't use the right wording. So the leaves are SDF objects and the nodes are SDF things. And of course, SDF things include the SDF object. So if you don't want to make this distinction, you can just call everything an SDF thing. And if you do want to make this distinction, then you can call your leaves SDF object. Okay. The proposal is to build it into the language that SDF object can only be a, a, a leaf node in the tree. Yeah. Sentence. But okay, yeah. Could live with that. Um, yeah. It seems it seems like it could still be go to the thing where the it could be user's policy. But I'm kind of I see Ari's point about you know if the language is expected to kind of work the same way everywhere, this would be a useful thing to have. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it is it very really useful to have a mechanism to uh, be able to indicate that as this is this no longer has composition. This is a leaf. So to, you, yeah, you can, yeah, that's you, what you I know. agree with. Is that if yeah. we're going to have two names, it's useful. If that is a useful thing to do with them is to to mm -hmm. to use them as a a sort of a when I see an object, I can depend on it only having events, actions, and properties. But when I see a thing, then I have to do the bigger. Um, yep. sort of tree of it can have objects and it can have things and it can have events and actions and properties and its own data definitions and all that. Yep. And and also I think this would be the smallest change to the existing spec, uh, which I think is, is, is also a useful thing uh, in this part of the process. Great. That's one object. So I think one yeah, I will uh, update the DPR uh, 71 then. Um, maybe one thing that could be discussed is, um, I think um, I now introduced in 71 also the, the array um, mechanism to SDF things. I think, um, Kasten, um, you said that this would be useful. Maybe there could be some, maybe this could be discussed briefly if um, this is, um yeah consensus that this should also be included in sdf things so um what i mean is this um these um, min items and max items um yeah. qualities that was my question so you're you're basically yeah, yeah. saying thing can also have min items and max items yeah exactly that would be the implication i would expect that it would be used inside other things that way. Yeah, I think it makes sense to have thing be a strict superset of object. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then again, it can be a, a policy for using to not, not allow it, but I think from spec wise seems to be a reasonable thing to allow. Yeah, I think that again, this, this is reasonable complexity because you could, you, you're actually removing the ability to do a bunch of structures if you don't do that. Because you're saying that only objects, you know, you, you're kind of limiting things to one level structures, or sorry, two level structures, I think. Unless you allow things to be dimensioned. <laughs> so. this, this dimension thing can only be object and it can only be contained in things. That's as far as you can go. I mean, you could you could work around it and do other ways, but I could imagine use cases where you want to have dimension things inside a thing, and then objects inside those. And you know, I, you could carry that to like n number, and that's where again the use case could limit it because you're not really changing the behavior of a thing; you're just saying that we're adding an additional constraint. Good. So, um, yeah, no yeah. objection to dimensioning things then either. Cool. Then the last slide, I think we have four minutes left. Um, this is uh, just confirming that um, uh, the next draft uh, will be the place where we actually define the version field, uh, where we <clears throat> make up some rules for combining information from uh, info blocks and where we write up our rule when we use SDF foo uh, versus when we use foo. Um, so just confirming that this is uh, SDF.next. That's one. Okay. 
Wonderful. Yeah, and, and, and dot, dot next being the one after the RFC. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Thank you, Kirsten. Great. So the, 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 the version in the RFC will be 1.2, right? That's a good question. <laughs> I think we've already um, used 1.1, so don't we have to? Yeah. Um, actually, I mean, how do you, is, is that, if we're not talking about SDF version, how is that usually, in this kind of case, in ITF, I mean, typically things are referred to by RFC number. Uh, Are there any good? Uh, because on the other hand, obviously, an RFC is has a bit more weight than a, our own old self-published uh, RFC one, for instance. That's just for the base version. We'll still need versioning beyond that between mm -hmm. this RFC and the next RFC. So we we can't fully give up the SDF versioning field to uh, versioning. We still have to have continuity. I think in the tool chain, it seems like it would be convenient to maintain continuity of SDF versions. I mean, maybe mm -hmm. we should have like semantic versions or what we do. Okay, so that yeah, but I'm not not talking about the model versions, but talking about the spec versions. So the SDF. That's right. So in the tools, you use you know we already have this in the tools. This is why I say we've already used one point one because we already have it in the tools that yeah. it, it calls it one point one. So we kind of need to call it something else. Well, I, I'm okay with 1.2 if, if people are fine with that, but uh, yeah, I'm also fine with calling it 2.0 or something if you want to make, you know, a fresh start or. Well, interestingly, the SDF models don't say which SDF version they're using, uh, which no. I think is, is a really good thing. <laughs> But uh, it is still uh, useful for for um, general hallway talking to be able to identify a version uh, number. Mm -hmm. And that's why I asked whether we want to call the thing SDF 1.2. I, I think 1.2. I think 2.0, 2 I would say we're not really there. We're still refining our first version. So calling it 2.0 might be a little bit to me feels like it's beyond where we really are. It's making a statement that that's kind of really a, in, off in the future. We haven't really done a one a version one yet. This is still our version one. Yeah. But um, yeah, okay. my opinion. I mean, Perfect. I'm, I'm fine with it, so yeah, good. One Thank second you. left. <laughs> Thank you all. When can, what's next? <laughs> Can you, can, do we need more design team meetings, basically? For the RFC, not, not for the other things, uh, but for the RFC. I hope not. Um, I would probably still mark my calendar uh, on the 20th. So yeah. just in case there's anything left, we do have to, to discuss. Yeah, I, I would. Yeah, I, I would recommend keep placeholder there in in the two weeks, um, and then we can see like after Easter how it looks like. Yeah, it's easier to cancel than schedule. Yes. Okay, so I, I will actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. But because these are the placeholder for the time. Yeah, so. but because okay. these are work meetings, not not interims, we can be. Less yeah. relaxed about the scale, scheduling hassle, but I think you know, sending a heads up that we may have a meeting that time is prudent. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you guys for the, all the hard work and uh, thank you all. Thank you. Well. Please comment on them. Thank you. And bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. bye. bye.